Do you want to stay at Kansai Airport, but for a reasonable price? Me too. Let's do it. So you might have already heard about capsule hotels in Japan being very cheap, but how can one be the best place to stay? First, let's talk location. Kansai Airport is about one hour away from Osaka, so for early departures or late arrivals, you probably want to sleep somewhere nearby. And since the airport's on a man-made island, this gives you two options. You could stay at a hotel over on the mainland. You'll have to take a train to get over the bridge though, and this is an extra hassle, especially if you're travelling early in the morning or late at night. You're basically adding at least 30 minutes by staying on the mainland, which is less fun when you're jet lagged or if you're sleepy from having to get up for an early flight. And if you're planning on picking up a rail pass when you arrive, you'll need to visit the JR ticket office. If you arrive after it closes, it's even more of a pain because you're gonna have to come back the following day. And that's why I think the best choice for many people is just to sleep somewhere at the airport. And this brings me to my next point, the price. There are only three places where you can stay at Kansai Airport. All three places are in exactly the same spot, just a few minutes walk from the main terminal and railway station in the Aeroplaza building. On the budget end, you've got the internet cafe Nodoka, which costs about 5,000 yen for a private booth for nine hours. You might have trouble sleeping because of noise from staff or other travellers though, and 5,000 yen for an internet cafe isn't my idea of budget either. At the price gougy end, you could get a room at the Hotel Nico, which costs anything upwards of 14,000 yen, and that doesn't even include breakfast. First cabin at Kansai Airport is, I think, the sensible option for sensible people. You get way more privacy, quiet, comfort and facilities than the internet cafe for a fraction of the price at Hotel Nico. So what do you get for your money? Let's look at the standard cabin. It's 1.2 meters wide and 2.1 meters long, so it's much roomier than most of the capsules you'll find in Japan. The cabins are 2.1 meters high as well, and at the entrance I can actually stand up, as well as kneel up on the bed. I find I have plenty of space with these cabins, and although it's not possible to have a proper door for legal reasons, you do get maximum privacy with the sliding screen. Inside you've got a couple of outlets for all your charging needs, a dimmer switch for the light, an audio jack for listening to the TV, and a control for the air conditioning. There's a section for hanging your clothes, and down at the end of the bed there's a comically small waste bin, an emergency torch, some slippers that were too small for my feet as usual, as well as the customary towels and baggy pyjamas you find in most capsule hotels. So one of the main problems with this kind of accommodation is that you're more likely to hear noise from other guests moving around, which isn't great if you're a light sleeper. Though speaking from experience of staying here at least five times, I've never had any problems with noise. The walls between cabins seem to be well insulated, and footsteps and other ambient noises get cut down to a minimum by the carpeting and curtains all over the place. Another the big issue people worry about is the security. First you've got keycard passes that you tap to get into the cabin area from the lobby. Next there's a deep rectangular shaped locker built into the sides of each cabin. The key is on a bracelet similar to the ones you get when you go to a swimming pool, so it's harder to lose. The locker itself should be more than big enough for all your valuables, unless one of them is a pet giraffe. And if you're wondering about where you put your cases, well there's a dedicated area away from the cabins which has combination locks you can use. And for women who want to stay here, you should know that there's a women only floor because this is a sex segregated hotel. If you're getting value out of this video, why don't you give me a thumbs up to let me know. And if you'd like to get more tips, tricks and suggestions about where to travel as well as the latest news updates that are relevant for your trip planning, then why don't you sign up for my newsletter, the link is down below in the pinned comment. Now although this place has miniature sized rooms, it doesn't mean that it skimps on the facilities. Right next to the lobby there's a lounge area which is great if you want to pretend to do some work for a YouTube video or you simply want to chat with travelling companions. Vending machines are also close to hand with a limited selection of drinks. The lounge area is also a good place for preparing food and drinks. It has a hot water pot, 
and microwave. This, as well as the 24-hour Lawson convenience store, just a minute's walk away, means you're more than covered for simple meals. But in case you want something a bit more complicated, there's also a Nakao outside, which is also open 24 hours. It's very handy since you don't need to walk all the way back to the main terminal where there's a large food court. Downstairs, there's also a washer dryer next to the bath and shower area, in case you really need to get some laundry done in a hurry. Although since there's only one, you might have to wait to use it when things get busy. The common bathroom and shower area is also downstairs and pro tip here, it gets really busy and sometimes messy in the mornings, so I suggest taking a shower before bed instead. In true Japanese style, there's also a communal bath here, although for obvious reasons, I don't have any footage of that. So now to the main event, getting some rest. I'm always surprised at how well I sleep here, and somehow it always seems to be easy. I don't even have to wear earplugs. If I balance my experience of staying in other capsule hotels with this place, I'd say that first cabin has generally been quieter for me. Whether it's the carpets, the insulation between cabins, cabins or just luck, I've always got up feeling refreshed. Obviously, your mileage may vary. So, should you stay here? Yes, definitely. Being able to just walk a few minutes to the main terminal in the morning makes early flights so much less of a pain. The only downside with first cabin is that the lounge isn't really a great place to chill out before going to bed, so you might want to use one of the coffee shops in the main terminal instead. But for the money, and with a great location, I don't think you can do much better than this place. Why not give it a go? But before you get packing for your trip, be sure to watch this video about the 7 essential items you should bring. See ya!